a few brief minutes. Eight years ago, the American people rounded up a posse, had said that the problems were too complicated to manage. Well, he said, of course they are, our new sheriff, so government should stop trying to manage them. It should stop putting its faith in the bureaucracy, enterprise, and respect for family, community, and faith. The result has been nothing less than spectacular in the economy, and if those same principles could education too. The President directed this workshop on choice and education be held, and it continues his vigorous leadership for the growing movement for educational choice. The President spurred and important accomplishments. While frustrated at the national level by the Congress in his proposals for vouchers and tuition tax credits, the President have choice to what type of choice should we have. The President has had many successes in promoting educational reform, but his most important success has been the encouragement he has given, saying what an honor and privilege it's been for me to serve in what I think is one of the greatest presidencies, and certainly one of the greatest presidents. We'll be here any second. <laughs> Hold on one minute. And I'd like to present the President of the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Usually this is in the middle of the stage, but I noticed they did put it to the right. <laughs> well, I thank Ken and thank you all for being here. We're here to talk about a remarkable advance in American education, an idea whose time has come, or it might be better to say whose time has come again. For when we talk about choice in public education, what we mean first and foremost is parental choice. We're talking about reasserting the right of American parents to play a vital, perhaps the central part, in designing the kind of education they believe their children need. I don't need to rehearse the litany and cite the evidence to this audience. We've been talking about these matters for eight years now, and the evidence is overwhelming. Choice works, and it works with a vengeance. Whether it's a Harlem school district in which scores have risen dramatically because parents are now permitted to choose which school to send their children to, or the marvelous program in Minnesota that is fostering unprecedented competition among pub public schools to make them more attractive to parents and students. Choice is the most exciting thing that's going on in America today. Choice represents a return to some of our most basic notions about education. In particular, programs emphasizing choice reflect the simple truth that the keys to educational success are schools and teachers that teach and parents who insist that their children learn. They must work in concert, respecting each other's particular concerns and needs, not second-guessing each other. And the choice in education is the wave of the future because it represents a return to some of our most basic American values. Choice in education is no mere abstraction, like its economic cousin, free enterprise, and its political cousin, democracy, it affords hope and opportunity. Can anyone doubt that after hearing these splendid young people testify about how choice has changed their lives, choice recognizes the principle that there is no one best way for all of us. It allows schools to excel at something special rather than trying and failing to be all things to all people. Education was one of the means by which this country first grew great and strong and powerful through the extraordinary efforts of ordinary Americans to better themselves and to make a better life 
for their families and their children. A key step in the most important domestic effort of this century, the Civil Rights Movement, was the 1954 Brown decision by the Supreme Court. And that, of course, was about affording black children equal access to public schools. We all know how significant that was because we all understand that without appropriate education, it's nearly impossible for the disadvantaged to improve themselves. All Americans can consider the particular triumph of those who have immigrated to our shores from scores of lands, scores of cultures, speaking a hundred different tongues. The struggle to make their way in a country whose language they didn't speak was a hard one. And almost every sociological study of American immigrants tells the same story. Those that did best economically are those whose passion for education drove them and their children. The, I get tangled up in my bandage every once in a while here. <laughs> but, uh, but as I say, drove them and their children, and that meant paying attention. It meant making sure homework was done, report cards were signed, and that their children were always challenged and never bored. In this way, they knew their children would make it as Americans. For too long, I think, we were content as Americans to imagine that our nation and our society were so inherently strong and successful that they could continue to run on automatic pilot. The schools had done well and should continue to do well. We could, could turn our attention elsewhere. Well, if we were on automatic pilot in the past, we've learned we have to work the controls by ourselves every day, and that's why ed choice in education is so important. Parents are at the controls. At the same time, teachers know that their students are going home to parents who will serve as their partners in getting the homework done and keeping the excitement and enthusiasm up. Students won't be marking time in school. Instead, they'll be preparing for an American future in which literacy and technological skill will be more vital to their chances for prosperity than ever before. Engaged parents and engaged teachers mean engaged students and a better educated America. Now you'll be hearing from some other folks, including especially a good friend of mine, name happens to be George Bush. So I'll get off of here and I want to thank all of you for all that you're doing and God bless all of you. Mr. President, thank you so much for that wonderful speech. Uh, the children have something they would like to present to you, so if we could just move to the center of the stage. Thank you. Mr. Secretary. Mr. President, on behalf of the young people and myself, we would like to present this to you. White House works by choice and education. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> well, I thank you all. I'm very tempted to keep this and to get on the other hand, maybe it'll do a little more good if it's on display in the presidential library. <laughs> well, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.